From Indiana's number one news source, this is Fox 59 Morning News. Choosing the right college can be a very tough decision. A lot of students weighing their options right now. And while they're looking at the facilities and the places to stay, they also really should consider the dining hall as part of that decision. Joining us this morning is David Porter. He's an author and expert with 30 years of hands-on food experience. We want to thank you for coming in this morning. This is included in your book. You do uh, uh, consulting work yes. on this kind of thing. How is it that a dining hall can affect a student's GPA? Well, it has a profound effect, and don't take my word for it, Zach. A couple of months ago, I was at a conference uh, at Texas Tech in mm -hmm. Lubbock, Texas, and the CFO presented a PowerPoint presentation with statistics to demonstrate how living on campus and dining on campus actually produced higher GPAs and higher graduation rates for students who didn't live on campus or dine on campus. Hmm. Is that just because it's a, a more, I guess, sort of structured environment in general, or, or what, why is that? Well, I think it's part of the social compact. It's a home away from home. It's the opportunity for us to come together as students when we go away to college for the first time, the emotional security of being together as part of a group, uh, ma making friends, meeting different people, having the opportunity to, to study with folks and just to uh, socialize. It's so that if I'm looking at a couple different uh, you know, campuses and, and still making a decision, right. what should I look for in a dining hall? I mean, everything from what they serve to when they serve it? Absolutely. I mean, first impressions are important. When you go to visit a campus and you go to a dining hall, it looks nice, it feels good. Uh, it's socially rich. There's a lot of action there in terms of uh, students. But look at the hours of operation. You know, when is the dining hall open? Is it going to be open when your son or daughter or when you were in college when you would want to use it? Look mm -hmm. at the meal plans. Is it a good value? Next to living on campus, it's, it's pretty expensive to purchase a meal plan, so you want to get a good value for that. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity to come together not only to dine, but to socially meet and greet each other to make friends it helps with retention, it helps with recruitment, and it helps with alumni relations. Ron mentioned that uh, the dining hall he had at school was only open for, what did you say, Ron, like five hours? <laughs> like five, five or six, six hours It wasn't a, a lot of time at all for I the I mean, whole, is it better you know... for them to be open more like <laughs> around the clock? Absolutely. Or? As a matter of fact, Ron would love the, uh, one of the projects I recently completed at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, British Columbia, where we uh, recommended a 24-7 residential dining hall with unlimited dining plans where students could come and go as frequently or as infrequently as they chose mm -hmm. throughout the day and night. It's been an overwhelming success and believe it or not students actually consume less food but they want to participate more and voluntarily purchase meal plans that are even sometimes a little more expensive to participate in the rest of campus mm. because they can come, they can hang out, they can socialize and they can dine. What's more social than dining together? Well yeah and I'm just picturing those you know, like all-nighters studying f for an exam, and you know you can go down and get some coffee or something right. like that. It's available to you without having to leave and, you know, go somewhere else. Right. Well, my, could help. In my book, The Porter Principles, I refer to it as the student clock. And the students probably live on a different clock than you or I do now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so first, second, third, fourth meal of the day, you know, what time that would be. And it's important right. to be open when the students want to do it. And I kind of liken it to Facebook in terms of the whole picture of what I do. Nobody would give Facebook the credit, I don't think, for creating the need in each one of us to want to connect and have friends and connect to those friends. But what Facebook did was they created a computer application using the internet to meet that need. That's exactly what I do on college and university mm -hmm. campuses. I think Mother Teresa said, our hunger for love and affirmation is greater than our hunger for bread. And it's Maslow's number three need on his hierarchy of needs to connect. So when I can organize a dining program and dining venues so that need can be met, it's amazingly powerful. People can read a lot more about it in uh, the book, The Porter Principles, yep. available now. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you, You sir. can check out more information about this on our website, fox59.com. Just go to links and read more about it. Thank you very much for Thanks, coming Zach. in. Happy dining. Appreciate it. Happy dining and smart dining. <laughs> you may not have known this, but it is National Grilling Month.